ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवदगीता एज इट इज ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय द डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेद ऑन दिस वन फॉर चैप्टर 2 टेक्स्ट 72 जस्ट से दैट यू यू विल रीड इट आफ्टर वर्ड इन टमर ईशा ब्रह्मी स्थिति पार्थ नयनं प्राप्य प्राप्य विमुखिति स्थित वास्यम अंतकाले इति ब्रह्म निर्वाणम रक्षति get my shoe that is the way of the spiritual and godly life after attaining which a man is not bewildered if one is thus situated even at the hour of death one can enter into the kingdom of god before one can attain krishna consciousness or divine life at once within a second or one may not attain such a state of life even after millions of births it is only a matter of understanding and accepting the fact kathavanga maharaj attained this state of life just a few minutes before his death by surrendering unto krishna nirvana means ending the process of materialistic life according to buddhist philosophy there is only void of the completion of this material life but bhagavad gita teaches differently Actual life begins after the completion of this material life. For the gross materialist, it is sufficient to know that one has to end this materialistic way of life. But for persons who are spiritually advanced, there is another life after this materialistic life. Before ending this life, if one fortunately becomes Krishna conscious, he at once attains attains the stage of Brahma Nirvana. There is no difference between the kingdom of God and the devotional service of the Lord. since both of them are on the absolute plane to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the lord is to have attained the spiritual kingdom in the material world there are activities of sense gratification whereas in the spiritual world there are activities of krishna consciousness attainment of krishna consciousness even during this life is immediate attainment of brahman and one who is situated in krishna consciousness has already entered into the kingdom of god brahman is just the opposite of matter Therefore Brahmi stiti means not on the platform of material activity devotional service of the lord is accepted in the bhagavad gita as the liberated stage saguna samudhi tan brahma bhuya ya kalpate therefore brahmi stiti is liberation from material bondage shila bhakti vinod thakur has summarized this second chapter of the bhagavad gita as being the contents for the whole text In the Bhagavad Gita, the subject matters are Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. In the second chapter, Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga have been clearly discussed, and a glimpse of Bhakti Yoga has also been given as the contents for the complete text. Thus, in the Bhakti Vedanta and the Purports, the second chapter of the Shrimad Bhagavad Gita, in the matter of its contents, please go through it slowly because I have to go to the back. I'll go to the front. I got to the back of it so I guess we could get that back to it. I just go to the same place way up the back. Tomorrow is Vaikuntha Ekadashi. I should say the Pranam Mantra is supposed to be. Yeah, tomorrow is Vaikuntha Ekadashi. In which many people are expected to come. How many? today as to me no one knows a few likes probably few likes it must be a few likes a few likes yeah which is actually unimaginable in the western countries that a few likes people would come for anything i mean countries like your country the whole country is a few likes right in slovenia slovenia The whole country is what? 25 lakhs? 20 lakhs. People are coming uh because they want to have 
Brahma Nirvana, which is mentioned in this verse which we read today, which means to attain liberation from material existence. And as Srila Prabhupada explains in his translation, although it's not explicitly mentioned in the Sanskrit, this means to enter the kingdom of God. So it is a sign that the essence of Vedic culture or Indian culture is still very much alive in India today. That despite so much westernization, such as for instance a young girl with a shaved head and a western style hat on, uh, the, the, shaved, the shaved head is part of the Indian culture and the hat is the western culture. There we have another example, a uh, very nice looking young Brahmana boy walking on the street talking on his cell phone. So two things are going on side by side. But the essence of Indian culture has always been the quest for mukti. Some people would contest that statement because at certain phases in India's history uh, materialism was most prominent in the form of uh, karma monks. But we can nevertheless state that the essence of Indian culture is the search for mukti because all the prominent philosophies all the philosophies that have been prominent in India are rooted in or derived from the Vedas, including the holy materialistic Karmami monks. But the actual purpose of the Vedas, as described by Vyasadeva in Brahma Sutra, is anavriti, liberation from the material world. And for at least uh, the last 2,000 or more years, the uh, Buddhists who are non-Vedic but have some idea of Nirvana and Jains and then Shankaracharya promoting Mukti, uh, the, the emphasis became on anti-materialism or Mukti. These are all very broad generalizations. These the statements. And with the advent of the Vaishnava Acharyas, beginning with uh, Sri Ramanuja Acharya, the uh, proper definition of Mukti, which is to enter the kingdom of God as uh, Vishnu Kainkarya, in, in service to God, that became established. So the Vaishnava Acharyas have established the actual point. And in course of time that has become confused with various completely bogus ideas. And thus we find in the modern age that the names of and the worship of totally bogus people like this so-called Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, whoops, I'm not supposed to mention names, are... Uh, they're better known than the real great Acharyas, like Ramanuja Acharya. And we find that even here in Sri Rangam, which is the capital of the Ramanuja Sampradaya, that uh, many Brahmanas, although they retain their faith in Sri Ranganatha Swami, have large pictures of certain so-called Babas who claim to be Bhagavan. So, coming here, we, we feel joy, but not unmitigated joy, because it's mixed with sorrow. The joy of being in the holy place where so many people have faith in the Vaishnava Acharyas and in Vishnu is tempered or 
yeah, mitigated by <coughs> mitigated by uh, seeing that their their faith is in many cases mitigated by worship of completely bogus, total rascals. Srila Prabhupada said that Indian, modern Hindus are dragging the Vedic culture. We can imagine what that means. That if, if, just like uh, if you hold a deity, then you have to hold up prominently because you have great respect. But if you drag something, that means you don't have, you, you, some connection is there, but it's not, not respectful. Just like Bhagavan Krishna, after killing Kangs, he dragged his body just to show before all the assembled people that Kams was well and truly dead. So people still have a connection with the Vedic culture, it's not completely gone. But it's actually very uh, disrespectful to the actual personality of Godhead and to the actual Acharyas to exalt persons who are only fit for dragging like Kamsa. They should be killed like Kamsa and dragged. But still we see that uh, despite so many bogus things, that people have some faith in Vishnu and Vaikuntha. Vishnu many, Vaikuntha the many. The idea is that they have to go through a certain gate, isn't it, that's only open on one day a year. And if you go through that gate, then you're guaranteed to go to Vaikuntha. So people come because they have some faith in them. In almost all cases, because they haven't heard from Vaishnava Acharyas, they have very little idea of actually who Vishnu is and what Vaikuntha is. But at least there is a general idea that we are to be liberated from this material world and go to the kingdom of God. And that by, and the faith that by walking through that door, one will very easily attain what is otherwise uh, very rare to attain. They might at least have this much faith that if there is something there, might as well uh, take it. So, that much faith is there. Despite the uh, large statue of one uh, famous atheist, which is, which is uh, provocatively placed before the uh, temple with a 24-hour police guard because uh, any person who's actually dharmic would want to remove that. The kshatriyas are supposed to uphold dharma by force. If someone is a dharmic, they should by force stop that activity. But in this corrupt age, the persons who are supposed to be the protectors of society, they protect the adharmic principles. So how many devotees here are planning to go through the Vaikuntha gate, Vaikuntha dwaram? No one? Yeah, no planning. I'm not planning to go, I don't have any plan to go. When Srila Prabhupada was at Kumbha Mela with his disciples, they asked him about the significance of Kumbha Mela. And Srila Prabhupada told them that by bathing at the Sangam, at Prayag, during the particular Amrita Yoga, that one would be liberated. But Srila Prabhupada said, we are not going to bathe. We are already liberated. Srila Prabhupada said, we have come here to preach. So you may wonder, why should we preach to people who are about to get liberated? One contribution that the, or major contribution that the Gauriyas have is that uh, actual bhakti, one quality of actual bhakti is Moksha Laghuta Krit. It makes moksha, in, in, in comparison to bhakti, moksha is considered insignificant. Now we find in the Vaishnava Sampradaya, apart from the Gorya Vaishnava Sampradaya, 
that it is recommended to worship Vishnu to attain Mukti. And they define Mukti as uh, Brahmani Avanam Richati, attaining to the kingdom of God. The Mukti that is uh, promoted by the Vaishnava Acharyas is different to that of the Sayuja Mukti of the Kevaladvaita Vadi Shankara Sampradaya. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there are four kinds of Mukti which are described, which are acceptable to Vaishnava Salokya, Samipya, Sarshti, and Sarupya. So, Salokya means to live on the same planet as the Lord, Samipya means to live close to Him. Sarshti means to have the same opulence as him. And Sarupya means to have a form similar to him. But Bhagavan Kapila Dev explains, Diyamanam Nagrinanti Vinamat Sevanam Jana, that the devotees, they don't accept any of these opulences unless they have the opportunity to serve the Lord. So in the Vaishnav Sampradayas, they uh, understand that Mukti means to enter uh, the spiritual world for serving the Lord, but nevertheless, um, in their writings and in their preaching and in their consciousness, the, the emphasis is always on the term mukti, what I will attain, I will attain release from the suffering of material life. And we find in the uh, writings of the Ramanuja Sampradaya that they also state that similar statements to that which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has famously said, na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam bhajagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani shware bhavatad bhaktira haituki twai. I hope everyone knows the purport of this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I desire neither wealth, women, or followers, or anything considered desirable in this material world. I also do not desire release from this material world, from, from repeated birth and death. I simply desire service to you, Krishna. We have, uh, following in the same spirit, Vaishnav, Gorya Vaishnava Acharyas have made similar statements. Kita Janma Hau Jathatu Adas Vahimokha Brahma Janme, Brahma Janme Nahimora Ash. Bhakti Thakur says that let me be born even as a, an insect, if somehow or other I can serve you in that position. But I don't want to take birth even as Brahma, the greatest being in the universe, if I'm a Brahma who's not, in, or who's inimical to yourself, Krishna. So we find similar statements in the, uh, for instance, in the Mukunda Mala of Kula Shekhar Alva. And Chaitanya Mahabharu also prayed to be the, the servant of the servant of the servant of the servants of Krishna. And in Mukunda Mala there is a similar statement. But, uh, yeah, so in the Ramanuja Sampradaya also, that the, the nature of Mukti as uh, service to Krishna or Narayana has been uh, established. However, as I was saying in the Gorya Sampradaya, the, the emphasis is more on service. They just serve Krishna, don't even bother about Mukti. Whether we get Mukti or not, what does it matter? We just want to serve Krishna. Whereas in other Sampradayas, the emphasis is more on, yeah, Get mukti and serve Krishna. In the Gorya Sampradaya, the uh, spirit of service has been taken or, or understood or realized to its uh, utmost point. The point where service appears to be not service. Whatever is required to please Krishna should be done. In a, in a very natural manner. In, uh, in the mood of awe and reverence, 
one always has to be aware that God is great and I am very small and I have to serve him with much gravity. But uh, one whose whole being is imbued with the spirit of service to Krishna, that it's so much part of his being, then he may even act in a contrary manner, apparently contrary manner. So that we find, for instance, uh, Mother Yashoda chases Krishna with a stick as if to beat him. And the gopikas, they uh, offer their very selves to Krishna, even though that is against the rules of moral society. Now these pastimes are also well known and glorified in uh, other, in various Vaishnava sampradayas. But it's only the, or, or especially the Gauriyas, who take this not only as the, who take these uh, sweet pastimes and the sweet dealings of Krishna with his devotees, not as simply as a feature of the Supreme Lord, but as the very essence of his being. As stated in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhurja Bhagavata Sa, the very essence of God's godness is that he's sweet. Whereas in uh, other sampradayas, the essence will be more like, we more considered Maryada Bhagavata Sa, the, the uh, proper dealings and behavior considering the greatness of God will be considered the essence of his being. So we don't deny that he's great, but we uh, aim at that standard of bhakti in which uh, one is serving Krishna with spontaneous love. Now, uh, it appears that in recent times, that means in the last five or six hundred years or so, uh, which is recent in terms of the religious history of India, that the, the uh, intimate pastimes of Krishna have been uh, well known, widely known in Indian society. The Gauriya Vaishnavas, they especially uh, exalt the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis and Krishna with Radha and two of the most important works, if not the most, if not the most important works for uh, or literary works which concentrate on these pastimes are uh, the Sri Gita Govinda of Jayadev Goswami and Gopi Gita of the 10th canto of Bhagavata. But these two works, they're not known it's not that they're only known to the Gauriyas. They're very, at least up until recent times, they were widely known in other sampradayas also. And even today, here in Tamil Nadu, at least among people who are somewhat learned and religious Hindus, the name or recitation of Ashtapadi, as they call Gita Govinda, is well known. Yesterday I was talking with a devotee who's... Uh, grandfather or great-grandfather had made a trust with a temple in Tanjabur, which is just, what, 35 kilometers from here, and extensive land outside the city. And the uh, terms of that trust were very explicitly explained. This trust is for Bhagavata Seva. And uh, certain activities were prescribed that there should be a daily recitation of Ashtapadi and Gopika Gita, and uh, there should be Kirtan, daily Kirtan, and uh, at certain, on the certain days of the year, various festivals should be celebrated, including Radha Kalyanam, which as far as I know is mostly performed by the smarters, smarter Brahmanas of Tamil Nadu, maybe other places in South India. I, otherwise, you don't hear of it elsewhere. You ever heard of that in North India? Everyone, anyone does that? Radha Kalyanam? No. 
it's, mo- it's not the Vaishnavas, it's mostly the, the Smartas, the Ayas here in Tamil Nadu who, who perform that. Scenes from Gita Govinda have formed the basis of uh, innumerable works of art, paintings, and thousands of, uh, at least I know in Bengali because I have a more familiarity with Bengali Vaishnav culture, that there have been literally thousands of songs which are still extant, what to mention of those are not extant, uh, in Bengali written explicating the scenes or reiterating the scenes of Gita Govinda, which is again an explication of the Leela of some Leelas in the 10th canto of Bhagavata. And many songs are very similar. I mean, this, they describe the same thing, maybe in just different words, but the same point you could say over and over again in many, many songs. So definitely in Uriya culture also the, the same thing. And not, not just the scenes of Gita Govinda, but there have been many songs on the, uh, just like for instance, Krishna's journey to Mathura. Especially these Gopi Leelas have been much discussed, poems written about them, and art painted about them, and dramas. It's very widespread. Now, in our present Vaishnav Sampradaya that we are in, coming from Coming through uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gorky Shodas, Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Sasura Thakur, our own Srila Prabhupada, we are warned not to read Gita Govinda. Because if one reads that without sufficient understanding and realization, uh, it may seem like a mundane sexual description. But is, we can see that in the past, up until fairly recently, it was widely discussed and well known among uh, respectable religious people, which suggests that there was an inherent understanding of the divinity of Krishna and his pastimes. As a disciple of Srila Bhakti Saraswati Thakur pointed out, that uh, the more sane section of Indian society has not criticized the subject matter of Gita Govinda uh, yeah. due to this apparently inexplicable fact that uh, what appears to be the lowest a description of the lowest kind of activities is uh, highly lauded and respected by the most moral and best people in society. The Gorya Vaishnav Sampradaya ultimately focuses on the pastimes and on the happiness of Radha and Krishna. Here in Sri Rangam, the emphasis is very much on Vaikuntha, going to Vaikuntha. Vishnu, Narayan is supreme. Whereas in the Gorya Vaishnav Sampradaya, we maintain that Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the original form of Bhagavan. Recently one devotee uh, told me that he had met one of the Jiyas, or the uh, spiritual leaders of the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Jiya at uh, Tiriakoil, that's the Tirukoil. that's the place of, is uh, Kula Shekhar Alvar, is that? Yeah, I went there once. The, uh... So, uh, one thing we find among the Ramanuja Vaishnavas, especially, is that probably more than others, is they're very appreciative of the activities of Iskol, more appreciative than we are. So, this uh, Jia told the, our his con devotee, that actually your Prabhupada is right, that Krishna is the original form. And he gave, his, he gave evidence that all the forms of the Lord are expansions of Ranganatha Swami, who has two arms. So if one actually comes to the standard of 
loving Krishna, two-armed flute playing Krishna, following in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers, then uh, one may not even desire to go to Vaikuntha. We find in Brihad Bhagavatamrita the description of Gopa Kumar, who is uh, by nature a cowherd boy in a friendly relationship with Krishna. He was in the material world and he went to Vaikuntha, but he wasn't immediately introduced to Narayana. And the residents of Vaikuntha told him that, look, you know, you're a cowherd boy, but you have to be careful here. You don't, don't rush up to Bhagawan, don't embrace him, you have to behave yourself. Before you go to see him, you should get dressed properly also. This, uh, you know, just looking like a cowherd boy, it's not very respectable. You should dress, put on some decent clothes. But Gopa Kumar said, no, I'm a cowherd boy. I can't, I, I don't want to dress any other way. So they brought him into Narayan and they said, when you go in, remember, just bow down, fold your, do this uh, Shadhanjali and uh, behave yourself. So they brought Gopu Kumar into the presence of Narayana. And seeing the form of Narayana, he completely forgot everything that he was told and rushed up to him to embrace him and was restrained. Don't! Stop! They grabbed him. So even though he was in Vaikuntha and Narayana sympathized, he understood his position. He said, actually, it's not really the right place for you. Vaikuntha is not the right place for you. Who will you say that to? To Hiranya Kashipu, to the gross materialists, to the Kamemimamsakas and the followers of Shankaracharya. Actually, Vaikundra is the place for everyone, for them also, but they're just in the wrong consciousness to go there. Their consciousness is not pure enough. It's not, it's not pure, and therefore they're not fit to enter Vaikundra. But for those who are uh, residents of the Golok, Vrindavan planet, they are embracing Krishna. And they don't want to go to Vaikuntha because they cannot embrace the Lord in that place. In Vaikuntha there's no Mother Yashoda chasing Krishna with a stick. So by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we're chanting Hare Krishna and... He told us that we're liberated, although I don't feel very liberated. But at least philosophically we have to accept that it's true, otherwise we become offended. But by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the process of bhakti, that uh, we are liberated. Of course, if I misuse this understanding and think, okay, I'm liberated, so uh, what kind of cigarette do you like best? Then you become non-liberated by not taking the mercy and not following the process of Krishna consciousness. But simply by chanting the name of Krishna, liberation is achieved as a byproduct. That was stated by Haridash Thakur on the basis of Shastra. And others didn't believe it, but they became offensive by not believing it. So I'm not planning to go through the Vaikuntha Dwaram tomorrow. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that, but I'm going to chant Hare Krishna as usual and go on with my service in Srila Prabhupada's service. And although I can't claim to be as ex- anywhere near as exalted as Gopal Kumar, we are attempting to follow in his footsteps. And we may not even want to go to Vaikuntha. Hare Krishna. Any question or comment about this? She's asking, entering into this Vaikuntha uh, was, is it right or wrong? Yes, say it again in Tamil. So it's right. But there's, uh, there's more to be said about this also. Is it right to chase Krishna with a stick? To beat him. Right or wrong? It says we can't uh, chase Krishna with a stick. Ah, then you should go through the Vaikuntha Dwar. 
and we'll chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare. Okay, I'm finishing that.